in this case n is positive. So this function will be what will we get here? So this is perfect. Capital N n minus one divided by n into n plus one, n plus two, and so on to n plus n minus one. Okay, this we have obtained here. Now this is even n plus n only up to n plus n minus one. Okay. When here this is first equation, first possibility. This is evaluation of this beta function up to this point when n is positive. N is positive. But since beta n is equal to beta n, but it will be that in case second possibility when n is positive or n only is positive let me write this is n only is positive n only is positive or only n is positive n only is positive here only n is positive then only n is positive and get to zero then what will be possible to in the number of n minus 1 factorial which is n minus 1 factorial and divided by here will be n into sorry n plus 1 I'm sorry this is n plus 1 n plus 2 and so on so this, this is n plus n minus 1 why this is there since we know that beta n n is equal to beta n n. When n is positive, then we take in the denominator n, the numerator will be n minus 1 factorial. But in case, but when both n and n are positive, in that situation, what we have to do? When m and n are positive, then multiplying, multiplying in numerator, this numerator of this one, of numerator and denominator of the second, second, let me take this second part, numerator and denominator. Or let me write the denominator of third, sorry, second, of second by n minus one factorial. So multiplying and dividing by n minus one factorial, then what what will we get? What will be n minus one factorial into n minus one factorial divided by it will be then this whole value it will be n minus 1 factorial divided by this value n into n plus 1 so this is n minus 1 factorial it will be done as let me write here this is n plus 2 and so on n plus n minus 1 up to this is the last value so this is the greatest value n plus n minus 1 and up to n minus 1 factorial is this. That means it is going to up to 1. This is nothing but equal to n minus 1 factorial n minus 1 factorial divided by which is n plus n n plus n minus 1 factorial. Try to understand. This is the third possibility. Third possibility three, three evaluations of beta function or beta integral or second first integral of Euler's. So Euler's first integral is evaluated in three possibilities. When m is positive, when first was n positive, then in the limit we have n minus one factorial. The limit we have this one. And if the m is positive, then we have n minus one factorial in the limit. In the limit we have the same type of function. But in case this when both n and n are positive, 
In that situation, this value will be obtained by multiplying numerator and denominator by n multiple factorial. So this n multiple factorial and this value will give us because n multiple factorial means this n n multiple n minus two up to one. So this is four n plus one n minus one factorial. This is n plus n minus one factorial. And the numerator we have n minus one factorial and n minus one factorial. This is the third result of possibility evaluation. This is the evaluation of beta function. Okay, so there is the beta function. It's about three possible results. This is what the question number four is we have done. So there are three possibilities of evaluation of beta function. Now let me see question number six. Let's question number six. Let me talk about that. Now question number six is of more fun. Let me check it. So what is the question number six? Transform the following. Okay, let me check it. Transform. Here we transform the following. Transform the gamma function. Okay. To transform the gamma function. Transform the gamma function. Transform the gamma function. Gamma n. We know that zero to infinity. It is e is for minus x. X is for n minus one infinity. It is gamma function. We have. Okay, so transform the gamma function. Gamma n is equal to zero to infinity. We change the marker. Okay, so this is gamma function. Transform the gamma function. Gamma n is equal to zero to infinity. E is for minus x. X is for n minus one dx into these forms. The first is putting first transform into a different notation. What is that? Let me take that. So putting x equal to lambda into y. The lambda y or this is constant into y. Any constant here, lambda into y. So putting x x equal to lambda y in this equation. So the first equation I will take. If I transform this gamma function into this, take this, differentiating, differentiating it, we get differentiating it this one. The second function, differentiate the second with respect to y. With respect to y, we get what do we get here? It is nothing but dx upon dy equal to lambda only. But this implies that dx equal to lambda into dy. What are the limits here? Limits will be changed because that zero. At when x is zero, y is also zero. At x is infinity, y also zero. Also, also infinity. I'm not sure. Limits let me write here. So limits let me calculate. At x is equal to zero, first is infinity for you. At x is equal to infinity, at x is equal to infinity, y is also infinity. And at x is equal to zero, y is also zero. Why? Because if I put put zero here, then y is equal to zero upon lambda zero, and when x is infinity, y is equal to infinity upon lambda. That infinity, this y will change. The same limits are there, and there will change the limits. So what we get here? So we get we can write this gamma function. Therefore, gamma function n is equal to zero to infinity. We can write it as zero to infinity. Now e is for minus x for the x we have to change. What is x we have substituted? X is equal to lambda y. That's e is for minus lambda into y. Okay, into x. X is what lambda y. This is lambda into y. All for n minus one. Into lambda into this lambda into dy. Dx is lambda into lambda into dy. Okay, this we have obtained here. Now let me further change it. What do we get? Let me write it here. This equation we have obtained. So gamma n we have obtained zero to infinity. 
D is for minus lambda into pi, and this is lambda is for, and this is I'm sorry, lambda whole power n minus one into lambda. This one lambda is the lambda into d by this lambda and lambda is for n minus one into y is for n minus one. This lambda is for n minus one. Y is for n minus one. This is d by. We get here zero to infinity. Then we add lambda whole power n equal to n minus one plus one. This is one power, and this n minus one, n minus one plus one. That means n is e is for minus lambda is y. This is y is for n minus one to d by. What do we get? If we can write it as take this constant value lambda n towards this. Or let me further write it as lambda is for n constant out of the kind of integration. We would be infinite. E is for minus lambda y. This is y is for n minus y. This is equal. All so right. Now take this y and left hand side. This it will be nothing but gamma n upon lambda is for n. We will be zero to infinity. Okay. Or e is for minus lambda y. Into y is for n minus into dy. Now if I Change the lambda by other variable. Let me take the z. It will be e raised to the minus z y will be y raised to the minus n by. And here it will be lambda z raised to the n. If I substitute lambda as x, okay, so it will be okay. Or maybe z y or z x we can take. So it will be. E is for minus lambda minus z into y or z into x. We x is for n minus one into dx. Here we z is for n. On this way also we can convert this. This is the conversion of this value. So this is the first conversion. First conversion. This is transform. First transform. So first we have transformed it into this form. It is also valid. Then we have changed x by lambda y. So x is equal to lambda y. We have substituted here. This is the result. This result is also better. This can also be utilized. We can utilize this type of function. Okay. So let me take next transformation, second one. So what does second say? Now in second transformation, it says that transform this into other variable. So that this we are changing to y variable. Now second transformation is put x is for n equal to Yeah. Okay. Let me put here the fifth second part. Putting. Let me put here. Absolute power n. Let me put here. What do we get here? This is n into absolute power n minus one. Differentiating it with respect to here. Okay. Differentiating it with respect to here. We get here will be n into x is equal to n differentiation. It will be dx upon dz equal to one. What we are differentiating with respect to z here, z differentiation will be one here. But take this dz to that side. Dz into one is dz. In place of this, that is x is equal to n minus one into dx. Simply that x is equal to n minus one into dx. Is equal to one upon n. This n will come in the denominator. It will be zero. Okay. What the limits are? The main limits zero, 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 zero. Infinity, infinity. Just limits are not changed. Limits are same. The limits are the same. The zero change the limits because at x equal to infinity, zero is also infinity. At x equal to zero. Z is zero, same limit set. Therefore, gamma a will give us zero to infinity. E is power. Now what is x here? And this also implies that x is equal to z is power one upon n. Here x n equal to z. We can take n as root of z equal to x. So in place of x, we have to substitute. D is for minus Z is for one point two. One point two. D is for minus Z is for one point two. X. 
Now x and minus 1 into dx here we see is nothing but into 1 upon n is dz. This value so 1 upon n dz we have replaced x and minus 1 into dx, x and minus 1 into dx by 1 upon n dz. This what do we get? This is 1 upon n dx. Let me take out of the integral sign. We will take infinity. This is nothing but dx power minus dz whole power minus quantity into dz. And this is gamma n. But we can take n to this side. It is nothing but n into gamma n equal to 0 to infinity. d raised to power minus z whole power 1 upon infinity dz. This is a second transformation. Second transformation. Second answer. We have transformed by substituting x n equal to z. By taking x raised to power n at z, we have replaced the whole z value, z value. We have got z value. I'm not going to say the g. The g value will be able to replace it. The z value will also be able to replace it. In this way, we have to replace, transform the given gamma function into the required value form. Okay, so in the third one, we have to replace it into p form. e is for minus x equal to p. That is the third transformation. Let me take that. Okay, so the third transformation is this way. Okay. Now let me take the value also. So what is the third transformation? This is gamma n here. We are given. Gamma n equal to the value. This is given here. Okay. This Okay. So gamma n is equal to this. The third transformation. Let me transform this. In the third way. What is the third transformation? Let me let me clarify. Let me take the third transformation. If I take out third transformation is we have to put the thing P e is power minus x is equal to T. Now we are we have to substitute P e is power minus x equal to T. No problem. Let me differentiate it. Therefore, differentiation of this, differentiating it, with the respect to t, with the respect to t, what do we get? We will get here minus e to the power minus x into b as equal to dc. Okay, this is a differentiation. Or e will call minus x into d x equal to minus g c. This is one of the differentiation. What is x here that we have to find out? Here, if I take this e will call minus x, then 1 upon x, I should take that. So this is the second requirement. Second, this is the first field of replace. This we are solving here. Put it e will call minus x equal to t or 4. E raised power of minus x equal to t, multiply that. 1 upon e raised power x equal to t, or 1 upon t equal to e raised power x. We are going to do it. Okay, or that is log, if I take log on both sides, log of 1 upon t equal to x on t. Because log of e raised power x is x log of x log e log e is 1. This is x here. x equal to log of 1 upon t. This is that is x equal to minus log t. So this is log t. Log 1 minus log t. But minus log, e, log 1 is 0. So log t minus log t. Because log m upon n is log m minus log m. Log n means 1, log 1 is 0, but log t minus log t will be there. So x is minus log t. This is what we have. Okay, so we can write this as 1 upon log 1 upon t. Log 1 upon t also possible. 
This is what we have to place now at the right of function. Therefore, gamma n is equal to what is gamma n here? Yes. Therefore, this e is for minus x, e is for minus x, dx is equal to minus e t. That we divide what are the limits that we write? We have limits of that e is for 0, it is 1. I put here e is for mass of d is infinity, or for e is for infinity is 0, 1 to 0, means will be 1 to 0. The limits that we write here. Uh, what are the limits here? So there are possibility this we have written down here that we will use. Now let me take the limits also. What are the limits here? At x equal to infinity, e to power infinity is equal to t. This is 0. 0 equal to t. At x equal to 0, e to power 0 equal to 1. T equal to 1. The limits are that we like right here the limits. The limits means therefore gamma is equal to 1 to 0 limits. And this is negative sign minus dt plus df e minus x df is equal to minus dt. And x is this value. X is log 1 upon t. It is nothing but the log or minus log t, this is minus log t whole power and minus 1 x is minus log t or it is nothing but log 1 upon t you can add log 1 upon t also ok, this is also possible now this is minus d t minus d t because e raised power minus x dx plus minus d t or e raised power minus x dx plus Minus d to the minus d to the 1 to 0 means limits will be interchange. This limit will be interchange with 0 to 1 here for the minus sign. The positive now, this is nothing but we can write it as log 1 upon t. Log 1 upon t this is and whole power and minus 1. This is d to This is what we call gamma n, the third transformation. This is third transformation. Third answer. This is third answer. This is third answer here. Log 1 upon t, whole power n minus 1. Value of x, y is log 1 upon t. This is 1 upon t. We can write minus log t or log 1 upon t, whole power n minus 1. We can write this minus sign has changed its limits. This is by property of definite integral. We know what? What is definite integral property? We have this, we have interchanged this limit. The limits have been interchanged. 1 to 0. This part is 1 to 0. Now we have been 0 to 1. The minus sign has been removed. This is the final transformation. Third transformation, the question. Question is, fifth question is solved now. So this question number 5 has been solved. Now question number 6 is left. So what? What is question number 6? He says, what is the uh, gamma 1.2 the value of gamma 1.2 is what? let me take from the transformation now we have just checked that gamma n was from setting transformation we were having from this setting transformation what we were having this we were having from setting transformation question number or sixth Second transformation we had gamma n plus equal to 0 to infinity e is for minus z is for half into d z. This was the if I replace okay z by this value equal to what is this value? This value is nothing but pi under root 1 point 2 under root pi. This whole value we can this is to be noted down. This is equal to 1 point 2 under root pi. This note down. This value in the improper integral we have proved. This value is equal to 1 point 2 under root pi. Note this. Note 
So let me write here, note down this. Note down. This value is equal to 1 upon 2 root 5. What the point? 1 upon 2 root 5. And this was n into, I'm sorry, this was here, n into gamma n. This we got from the second transformation this show. The second transformation when we put x to the power n equal to j or x equal to j to the power half is in case of x but here it was coming 1 upon n so this n was taken here this was here and fit the equation from person like it second transformation this we will have it now let me take question number 6 now question number 6 in that we have to find out now question number 6 here Yes, find gamma 1.2 or what is gamma 1.2 now we know that this is from we have from second transformation second transformation of question 5 this one, this we were having. Now this n gamma n, n gamma n, equal to e raised power minus z whole power half, you know, infinity. If we express this whole, in terms of this we will get 1.2 and we will find okay. This is, this is no bound, this result is equal to, I mean proper integral, this value is equal to this one. If I replace n by half, because here it is half, so the question n by half or n is equal to half we substitute this here in the second equation that was the first one we were calculating in this second one if I substitute n equal to half that means half gamma half n into gamma n that means half into gamma half is equal to this value 1.2 into gamma 5 sorry root 5 this is root 5 sorry. this is 1.2 root 5 root 5 this is 1.2 1.2 cancel out to gamma 1.2 equal to root 5 this we have to understand now this can also be solved because we know that gamma n is equal to gamma n is equal to pi upon sine n pi this also we will do in this question which one is there question number one let me this one gamma n into gamma 1 minus n ninth question is given as pi upon sine n pi from this also if I replace n by 1.2 it will give us gamma 1.2 this will also be gamma 1.2 this is gamma 1.2 whole square. It will be equal to, and that moment we will have sine half pi, sine pi by 2 i, and pi by 2. And pi by 2 is 1. This is pi. This is gamma pi, gamma half, gamma half equal to pi, and gamma half equal to this will be pi. From this also, this question also, we can calculate this question. From ninth question also, we can solve it. If I replace here n by half, n by half, so 1 minus half is half, gamma half, gamma half is equal to pi upon sine n pi, but sine n, n is half, sine half is uh, 1 because sine 90 degree is 1, so pi upon 1 is equal to 5. So under root, this is gamma 1 upon 2, gamma 1 upon 2 is pi, so this is gamma pi, gamma half, so this is so gamma half, I'm sorry, whole square, so gamma half whole square is equal to pi, inside that gamma half is equal to pi, simple, gamma half whole square is equal to pi, from my question, that is also possible, okay, that is also the result, but because we have not done it that yet, so we have not used that question 9th number. 9th can also give us the same. Okay, this is question number 16.
let me talk about question number seven. What is question seven? Say transform the beta function. Okay, let me now transform beta function gamma function into transform. The transform is not gamma function. You have to first clean this. Okay, now transform is not beta function. The gamma function we have already transformed in different forms. If you do different ways, I mean, now let me transform the beta function. Now question number seven says the transform the column. Question number seven is transform the beta function. Transform the beta function. The beta function. That is beta n n final position zero to one. X one minus x. This is sum for x to the power plus two. So write x to the power m minus one into one minus x to the power n minus one into b. So m is coming first. There is a seventh question here. X to the power n minus one, one minus x to the power n minus one. Here, this is beta m n. We need to one minus. Okay, this is beta function. This is to be transformed. Different possibilities like this. Okay, so beta m n equal to beta n n. We transform this. This we have already done. The beta m n equal to beta n n. Transform it. That we can transform. Okay. Let me take that. We put first putting this x equal to one point one plus five. Let me take first transformation. First, this is transformation or answer in this is the solution or answer. We are solving this question. The first transformation is putting putting x into one upon one plus y. Okay, so that can be sorry transform or if I replace this. What is x here or what is y here? So in place of y, we need y. That's where to find out. Okay. But before that, because one minus x we have to find out that it can be there. X is dead, and uh, therefore one minus x 